Shop all these siege tanks now, those drones really desperately trying to run for their lives. There's a DPP gaming. We do get started here in the, the first game of Wednesday Night StarCraft. It's going to be VVV Time against PSW's One Star. Uh, One Star, a Terran player, Time, the Protoss everybody knows and loves from VVV Gaming. And we're going to start out on MLG Taldream Altar. Yeah, MLG Taldream Altar, Protoss versus Terran, four spawning locations. And I'm not sure if I know any, uh, any of Time's crazy builds against Terran. I know that Time has that crazy level one weapon upgrade and Void Rays against uh, a Zerg. But um, uh, aside from timing pushes, I'm not quite sure what to expect as we, ha as we have one star spawning on the bottom right hand side of the map as the purple Terran. Meanwhile, time spawning on the top left hand side of the map as the blue Protoss. Protoss versus Terran, the game won in a best of seven King the Hill style. And what do you expect from these positions? Well, I mean, we're definitely uh, cross positions here. I think this map is a lot of fun to watch this matchup in particular because we get to see a lot of late game play from both these races in this matchup. And that involves a lot of High Templar, Archons, Ghosts, EMPs, Feedbacks, uh, a lot of late game play, which is just really exciting in TVP. I know typically in some of the other matchups, the games are ever a little bit earlier or they, they open up sort of the same way each time. Uh, Forge, Fast Expand against Zerg, things like that. But uh, BBB time, is a player that we've seen uh, count on countless occasions come up with really interesting builds. And as you mentioned, we haven't seen too much PVT from him. So I'm definitely looking forward to this one. Yeah, I am definitely looking forward to this as well. One star should be opening up with a barrack sometime soon. Um, otherwise, it would be one of the strangest builds I've seen ever from a Terran. Meanwhile, we can see that time is not going for that Forge fast expand that he normally or that Protoss players normally do against a Zerg. And time kind of building close to home. So this is going to be pretty interesting. We'll see if time has any shenanigans up his sleeve. Um, we have seen it quite often where he, he you know, he, he tries to hide a little bit back. He doesn't build so far forward. And by not building so far forward, sometimes a scouting SCV or drone doesn't actually find the scouting or the starting location of time for a, a very long time. Yeah, we, uh, we had that one fun game where his Zerg opponent on this map opened with, a, I think, a seven pool. And his first six lings poked their head in the, uh, the base of time, didn't see a wall off or a forge fast expand, and went to a different location, sort of screwed up the build completely. Uh, so time definitely somebody who likes to keep his buildings back at home. Uh, and somebody needs to pause, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think that's sort of unique. Uh, I know a lot of players you know, use that wall off, not necessarily in this matchup in particular, but time even keeping everything close to home against a Zerg player. So definitely a unique uh, player, unique builds as well. Um, and again, we haven't seen too much of his PVT. So as we get started here, one star needed a pause. Uh, we'll get going once again. So far, we just see one gas uh, from time, no gas yet from one star. Yeah, so no no gas yet from one star, and it looks like he is going to be going for a fast expansion. He saved up the 400 minerals already and building up a command center, and this will be spotted by time. Time now backing off with this probe. He's already seen everything he needs to see. He doesn't need to go inside that base to sacrifice the probe, as he knows that his opponent did get that early command center, knows that there is not going to be any gas, and based upon the timing um, and also the fact that a marine was shooting at that probe, that there is at least one barracks up and running. Yeah, and that's great information for time. He's going to immediately throw down his own Nexus. Uh, so both players are going to be on two bases here. Neither are going to be coming with too much aggression unless time has some sort of tricky uh, cancel Nexus four gate shenanigans. But it uh, looks like he's not going to be chrono boosting out that cybernetics core. Instead, going for a early stalker here, going to try to deny scouting. And we'll see whether that stalker gets out before the SCV of one star makes it into the base of time. Yeah, it looks like the SCV will be able to come inside just as that Stalker um, is going to pop out of there. It should start doing some damage. Oh, now trying to catch up to that SCV. The SCV, however, a little bit too close to that Stalker. And that SCV should get taken down with no problem. So both 
players am um, scouting what their initial worker, but the probe of time did stay alive um, and will be able to sit there and activate a Zelnaga watchtower. Keep track on the front door as now a one star should be upgrading to an orbital command at his natural expansion and also going into a two gas build. He does have three barracks that is definitely going to help him just in case there's any early aggression coming in behind time. But time um, and time and one star both know that the natural expansion is already up as time should be transferring some probes over in just a moment. Yeah, and one star actually got a lot of information there with that SCV. He saw that there's just one gas for time, so he knows that time's not going to be opening up with like a, a fast stargate and going for some sort of void ray pressure, which could be good on this map with that uh, cliff by the natural. And one star putting up that bunker knows that just gateway is probably going to be going up for time, wants to make sure that any sort of timing attack for the Protoss player not going to be very effective. And now we see time poking at that bunker, getting a few shots off, but eventually retreating with these stalkers once their shields do get low. Yeah, I was wondering if time was going to try to let those shields naturally recharge and just slowly pick away and get some damage onto that bunker, but that does take a decent amount of micro and a lot of focus, and it looks like time doesn't want to do that. However, his stalker on the low ground of that Zonaga watchtower should probably be repositioned. It is now making its way up as we are getting a factory and now stim pack being researched, so... There are a number of options that one star could be going, but based upon the number of barracks that he has, I'm assuming at one point he'll add on another tech lab, another reactor, double train marauders from the two barracks with tech labs, double train up marines, and then try to go into a, um, some sort of bio play. Um, we may see tank support, we may not. Meanwhile, coming in from time, I would hope that he um, goes into either high templar or a robotics facility. He needs to figure out that his opponent is going for bio. Otherwise, if he's only relying on gateway units he'll quickly find that stim and metavax is much more powerful than gateway units well time might have the answer against bio if he does use gateway units especially if he gets some charge lots perhaps some archons uh as you mentioned he does have a uh, plus one armor starting so that definitely sort of evens things up a little bit as you mentioned stim very powerful in the gateway versus bio matchup but if you also uh, counter with upgrades for the Protoss player, you can even it up a little bit if you use good force fields as well. As we see one star pushing out uh, a little bit behind supply-wise, but army-wise, they're dead even. It just looks like uh, time very far ahead in Harvesters, 44 to 32. So in the early going, uh, time's Harvester count and macro might be a little bit better than one star's. Yeah, time also very far ahead in terms of gas in the army. You can see about a 600 gas difference, and that's really because of all of these sentries. The earlier you can get a sentry out, the better. But we're also seeing time sitting on a lot of energy on a nexus, and I'm not quite sure what he's doing about that. Whenever you, as a Protoss player, and you know, anytime you get upgrades, you can just dump all of that energy on a nexus, start chrono boosting the forge, and we'll see if he starts doing that as well. As you can see, about 160 energy between those two abilities buildings and hopefully he does not fall behind in terms of any upgrades or misses any critical moments there as we now see a proxy or pylon and now a nexus being set up at the third base the key question will be whether or not time will respond and um, to this early aggression and um, force coming in from one star yeah and one star's got his plus one about halfway done so i imagine he might be waiting for that to push out here time's templar archive is about to finish so he could start getting some archons up he's got the gas for it uh storm is going to be a little bit behind if one star does choose this timing and it's interesting time got that uh, plus one armor and then didn't get any other upgrades so investing a little bit in charge and in that templar archives we'll see uh what he does with this whether he gets some archons up before this big uh attack pushes out for one star yeah, Time does have one High Templar right now, but he doesn't have that Psy Storm researching just quite yet. He may try to wait for it as soon as that Scanner Sweep goes away. We are getting that Zealot Charge and now level 1 Weapons Upgrade. So instead of going into the Armor Upgrade, which I would have naturally, um, so, um, I would have guessed, just based because he already has the level one, arm, level 1 Armor Upgrades, and that Guardian Shield just stacks and prevents so much damage, he's going into Weapons. So trying to be a little bit more balanced. The benefit of getting level 1 weapons, it, it does research about 30 seconds faster, and then you can chrono boost it out and perhaps and get the level 2 weapons upgrade a little bit later, but both sides just sitting in their bases, and I'm, I'm not sure if I've ever Looks seen like a very large macro game come in from time. 
Looks like One Star has two medevacs in the northern position, about to drop into time space. Time has no idea, so we'll see how much damage One Star is able to do with this big drop. All these bio units being dropped into the mineral line, time reacting very quickly, pulling back those probes. It immediately goes down the uh, the photon cannon, so One Star just ripping apart buildings here, starting with that assimilator and a uh, now the forge. He's going to take down the forge before the plus one finishes. So now One Star once again picking up here. Didn't lose too many units there. Time a little bit slow to react with his army. The one cannon he had in position didn't do too much to defend against that drop. Yeah, and I think he was a little bit too focused on the natural expansion. As you see, another drop coming back in. The cannon has already taken in, uh, taken a little bit of damage. Zealots now simply charging their way in, trying to finish off these marauders over here. It looks like that drop will be pushed back, but now the medevac drop coming over to try to finish off this nexus. The pylon has been destroyed. Uh, the high templar does, and now oh, getting a feedback onto one of those medevacs. So the medevacs are is not going to be able to heal nearly as much, and those units may be forced to retreat. Yeah, you really need a combination of Photon Cannons and High Templar and some Stalkers to defend against these drops at each base. The High Templar, instead of getting a Storm down, wants to instead get a Feedback, and then the Stalkers can focus down the Medivacs along with those Cannons. So we see right away uh, One Star going into heavy drop play, trying to get a lot of multi-prong attacks going at once. And Time, if we check the Losses tab, hasn't lost that much compared to his uh, Terran opponent. He still has 60 Harvesters. He is about to get up his third base. And uh, One Star now clearing the rocks for his own third, going to be a little bit behind. He does have a command center about to complete, though. Yeah, One Star now coming back in. He does have four sets of, or four dropships now making their way in one side at the three o'clock position, another side coming at the nine. So this is going to be a double attack, just another playbook um, from the MMA style from MLG. We'll see whether or not this will be successful at all. He's waiting for the dropships to get in position and then perhaps try to split times, um, times focus and attention. He does, uh, time does have a lot of energy on his nexuses. He should be able to get those upgrades rather quickly, um, rather fast. Funny that there's three probes sitting outside one of Time's assimilators. Actually, six probes sitting outside of Time's two of Time's assimilators, currently not doing anything as the drops now come in. Yeah, another three prong uh, drop in both the main, the natural, and possibly the third as well. The third was spotted immediately in the natural, a quick pickup, but in the main, it doesn't look like too many forces here are for Time. He does have these cannons up, so the cannon's going to quickly focus down these units. A stalker there as well, ready to clean up that medevac. Time doing a nice job focusing that down. And it looks like all of this pressure will be cleaned up, so time just continues to, mac to macro up and defend against these drops. Yeah, very, very nicely played by Time. Time, um, still, I, he still doesn't realize that he has six probes on idle, taking a look at assimilators. So finally um, making their way in, Time is just probably kicking himself there, wondering where all of his gas went, as now One Star finally establishing his third base as well. We're 16 minutes into this game. Both players now running off of three bases. The main mineral patches should start to be running out here. Now below that 500 mineral mark, meaning that another expansion should be taken or it should be taken in just a moment as we are now going into a robotics bay and a robotics facility. So we could be getting those Colossi. The transition in the Colossi may catch one star off guard if um, one star wasn't moving out right now. Yeah, and this is actually a tech switch which uh, OGS MC really favors. That's starting out with heavy uh, gateway units and going for those Templar and Archon sometimes. And if your opponent sticks to bio, when we see one star getting out these ghosts, he's going to go heavy bio here. You just immediately swap over to perhaps even double robotics facility, pumping out Colossus. That's what we see time doing right now. And without any sort of uh, you know heavy Marauder presence or any uh, Vikings out, uh, Terran has a lot of trouble dealing with both the Colossus, the Archons, and the Psystorm. Exactly. Right now, we can see that time is now nearing 200 food. He is getting that extended thermal lance range. He, he does have a lot of minerals right now, but he can't really spend them on anything. Just now establishing up his fourth base. Probes may get transferred over in just a little bit of time as well, as now we are getting the level 3 ground armor and the level 2 um, weapon upgrade as this massive bio army now making a move. So one star, um, perhaps just trying to A move with this massive bio army, and he's going to have to deal with both Psy Storm and um, those high Templars have a lot of energy and also Colossi. Vikings now being trained, but is it going to be enough? Yeah, we see one star going for the fourth, so that's nice safe damage. He's going to be able to at least force a cancel there. And now we're going to see that great late game that I talked about. It's feedback and side storm against those ghosts in that EMP. As we see the engagement about to happen here, time coming in, his charge lot streaming in one at a time. 
the uh, extended thermal lance not yet complete for this Colossus. A number of uh, feedbacks go off there, as well as a few storms, and one star being forced to micro back here out of those storms, but it looks like he's doing a lot of damage to Time's army, Time getting a lot of kills and damage with those Colossus. Eventually they do go down though, and it looks like one star coming out on top here, as I'm not quite sure he's got a ton of medevacs, just a few bio units left against the gateway units of Time. Yeah, the Archon will get taken down before um, before it can really do any uh, serious damage there. And we do have a lot of medevacs right now. You can take a look at the army tab, 2,700, 2,900 minerals. But of that, 900 minerals are very low hit point medevacs there. So that may be a problem. And also, all of those medevacs have over um, 150 energy. So if a feedback, uh, one High Templar could come in there and just completely shut down four medevacs very, very quickly. We'll see what's going to be happening as both sides are now trying to rebuild Time does have a lot of money in the bank. He should be able to uh, train up those zealots, perhaps take up another base um, in just a moment. There are a lot of Colossi. Level 3 armor upgrade and now level 2 weapons upgrade coming in as Vikings are now finally being added. And there that may be too many Vikings for Time. Yeah, I think Time really needs to get into some uh, good trades here. He's got quite a bank of minerals. Needs to be trading those, making those cheap zealots, allowing him do, to do good damage against the bio units of one star one star is uh, actually on top of his ma is spending a little bit better than time but i think times definitely have to has to take advantage of that bank as the uh, the tech switch to colossi has been found out by one star he's going to continue to produce vikings now three at a time already we see five vikings on the field so pretty soon he's going to have enough vikings to handle the uh, the colossi of time so time's going to have to have some sort of answer for this perhaps coming out with archons uh, and not saving all those Templar for just storms and feedback. Yeah, the Stalker is now pulling back over here. You can see this one star just having a lot of map control right now. He also has this proxy factory over here that's keeping track of this Nexus. And we'll see if Time can get up this base. If Time can get this base up and running, that would be huge. As you can now see, one star already has a planetary fortress at the 6 o'clock position. So he, um, one star has four bases of his own. The main mineral patch is pretty much mined out already. Time with those two photon cannons, he did block his minerals just a little bit. Um, but there's oversaturation there anyways. Yeah, I think time getting a little bit behind his opponent as uh, one star did get on that fourth base. As you mentioned, now it maxed out both players are. But I think one star uh, is heavy mining on that fourth base, at least uh, mineral wise, doesn't have the gas. And I think time really needs to balance his economy, perhaps take a quick fifth and get those probes on the, uh, the fourth on the gas. He really needs that gas so he can create those uh, high tech units to try to take on the Vikings and the ghost in one star's army is one star just patrolling the center here controlling the the middle of the map he's got all this information and i think he's going to get himself some free stalkers here if time isn't careful yeah time was able to back off just in time is he going to be able to get some free ghosts though and he may get some ghosts an emp shockwave does come down but time very happy to trade energy for or shields for ghosts in that particular instance ghosts those ghosts were very very high in energy and now taking two ghosts down mean that it is going to be much much easier for those future engagements as well It'll be interesting to see if one star responds with personal cloaking for those ghosts. You definitely don't want to lose those, and cloaking very good if the uh, Protoss player doesn't have a ton of observers out on the field. You basically force him to go for that detection, stop Colossus production, and get to all those all-important observers. As we see time trying to chase down the force of one star here, he doesn't have a lot of uh, sentries, so he can't get good force fields and allow those elves to do a lot of work as he's blinking in here, almost begging for an engagement, and it looks like an engagement we will have as the, uh, the forces of one star are kiting a little bit here and we do see a storm going down on all those vikings that stalker's doing a nice job trying to pick off those vikings they're all going to go down a nice emp goes off on all the high templar and those colossus more and more storms going down one star basically stimming and storming himself to death here though trying to kite backwards but now turning and fighting against these remaining stalkers and colossi time doing a lot of damage though pushing up against this bioforce and these colossi are just wrecking house time 163 one star at 93. Yeah, that was a beautiful engagement by Time. And um, Time was using the faster movement speed of those stalkers. And then um, it looked like One Star pushed out with his Vikings and his Marauders in the same control group. And in doing so, um, the Vikings got a little bit ahead. The stalkers were like, okay, I'm going to engage you. You're too far away from the Marauders. And then as soon as two to three Vikings went down, um, it, it was just the beginning of a, a beginning of a bad engagement. One Star does have three command centers sitting over here at the three o'clock position, though. So he could easily get back into this game. 
one of the benefits of Terran is the upgrade to orbital commands and then dumping your SCVs so that you have more food. Right now, 86 probes versus 59 SCVs. And that is going to be a problem later on if the Protoss needs to keep more food just for that, um, just for his worker and his economy. Yeah, and that engagement basically turned this entire game around. I thought uh, Terran was at least a little bit ahead, but that bad engagement allowed time to get up onto a fifth and a sixth as well. He's got gas saturation at all these bases, so his income uh, very balanced. He's going to be able to get out a ton of Colossi. He was just triple pumping Colossi uh, a moment ago, so he knows he took down all those Vikings. Now he's going to uh, play War of the World style here and just uh, continue to pump those Colossi and do great damage against the entirely uh, bio army of one star here. Yeah, uh, what I also like to see is that we're actually getting the shield armor or the shield upgrades um, from time. And with that time and, and, sh and this armor upgrades, it allows him to also use Archons much more effectively. One of the problems that I have with Archons in late game is a bio 3-3 upgraded bio deals so much damage to Archons, especially when Archons don't have those shield upgrades. So this is gonna, definitely going to be a benefit. We can see time does have a pylon over here and over here at the three o'clock position. He will be able to warp in units and put pressure on this command center. The key question will be whether or not this command center will be a planetary fortress in time in order to um, fend off the attack. But we are now also getting nine additional gateways. So with yeah, nine gateways, it's um, I, I believe that time will just be able to replenish his army much more quickly. Quickly. Yeah, that's beautiful from time. You, you might wonder, he's at 200, 200, why doesn't he push out? What he's doing is he's getting a bank and he's ramping up this production. He's going to have nine gateways finished in just a moment here. So he's going to be in the uh, the area of about 20 gateways. So any sort of engagement which happens here, he's going to be able to remax very quickly, keep the pressure on. So look for this next big fight as we are at 199 versus 191 and one star looking to uh, get a a bit aggressive here now pushing out into the center so after this fight see how fast time is able to remax here with 5,000 minerals and now 3,500 gas that's huge yeah that is absolutely huge and with 20 gateways that means in five seconds you can train up a 40 food army and not even zerg can really keep up with that as the stalkers are now trying to engage but they blink a little bit too far forward the marauders are going to be able to finish out those pylons will the stalkers blink cooldown be enough not quite sure uh, yes able to blink back down as the marauders and the Marines are now just pretty much stranded on the high ground there. And um, there are a decent number of Colossi, eight Colossi, two Stalkers for some reason being left behind. Are they going to perhaps try to catch up with the rest of the army? It looks like it will, as the Vikings are once again a little bit too far ahead. But not a lot of Stalkers to punish the Vikings. He's going to have to use Storms. A lot of Storms do go down, but a great EMP coming from One Star as well. Those Templar are just suiciding into the bio forces of time. I think time might lose this one. All the Colossus are going down, and One Star immediately wins that battle. And wow, that's a big turnaround here. And time really needs to macro up using that bank and try to defend his bases. Yeah, it's going to be a key question on whether or not he can get his bases up and running quickly and get all of those gateways. You can see Zealots and Stalkers are ready. And now back over here, uh, they are going to try to run away. The Concussive Shell slowing down one of the Zealots. The Zealots now backing off here. The Stalkers could easily turn around, re-engage. All of these probes over here, it is not heavy saturation, so this is not that important of a base as you can now see marauders now pushing into the uh, expansion over here as well so we are having problems all over the place as engagements are happening in the center once again stalkers losing the vikings vikings now going to land in ground mode as the zealots reinforcing once more yeah and one star units were so overstimmed there and he didn't have a lot of medevacs he'd been producing those triple vikings trying to take down the colossus he was able to do it but he didn't have enough medevacs to really support the bio force so he poked a little bit too deep into time space. Time was able to clean it up and another swing of the pendulum here of uh, in terms of food as it's now 199 for time, one star at 131. So these players are just going back and forth. Time was able to clean up and keep that sixth base so uh, and the fifth base as well. So he is now maxed out and ready to put on pressure of his own. Yeah, that was one of those crazy, crazy situations where the natural defense at the 9 o'clock location was a pylon. A pylon plus 20 gateways is an instant army anywhere in the field. And I, I don't think One Star was ready for that. As we now see that the 3 o'clock expansion going to be pressured. SCV is trying to come around, trying to repair it. This may not work out. The Stalkers are going to quickly blink in. The uh, Planetary Fortress already down to 500 some odd hit points. No more surface area and down goes this Planetary Fortress. But Marauders coming in from behind as well, finishing off a Colossi. So that was a, a bit of a strange engagement there, trading a base for his army. 
Yeah, the class site all going down a little bit late to the party as times uh, Zealots and Stalkers trying to take down the just the planetary fortress there. They're successful, but now one star going to turn this around and completely wipe out Time's army, and Time going to have to macro up once again. He was able to take a base there, and I think that was worth it as one star basically on these four bases, his, my, or his main and his natural completely mined out, his third and his fourth on the way as he has been using a ton of mules. As you mentioned earlier, he had a lot of orbital commands which were extra, so he's going to need to pick those up and find some new mining positions as time is just uh, waiting. He's got a huge bank, he's got huge production, and now one star going to be pushing into the sixth and seventh of time. We'll see what he's able to do. Yeah, we can see Archons now pushing in, but a massive EMP shockwaves could be coming in. The Archons need to engage. This Nexus will get taken down, and this is going to be a bad situation if one star is not very, very careful. You can see that all the Archons and now going to try to engage are trying to split up EMP shockwaves missing some of their targets there and now this massive bio army with shield upgrades able to push this back also Colossi coming in from the back as well and another swing of the pendulum uh, sorry for all the time analogies but um, this is just crazy crazy battle here on Tall Dream Altar God, I didn't realize the swing of the pendulum was a time analogy or pun. I, I try to stay away from those, but we do see time chasing one star back home. And again, one star very low from stimming. Doesn't have a lot of medevacs, and these Archons just doing a ton of damage. They're 3-2-3 three, three upgrades, so it is against a 3-3 three, three Bioforce. But uh, time just pushing in now might get some damage done in the natural. Looks like he's going to pull down, perhaps wait for one more round of units out of those gateways. Again, he's got about 20 of them, but he could be going for the fourth in the south, or he could try to push into the three o'clock uh, position, that third base of one star. But right now he at least has one star contained. One star is economy not doing so hot. He's only got 37 SCVs. And again, just basically those two mining bases. So time taking the map, making sure that he's able to be nice and safe here, get up to 200, 200, perhaps push in for the win. Yeah, right now this game just reminds me of, of StarCraft, classic Brood War, endgame time was sitting on so much gas. It's like, you know what? I'll just make make mass Archons. I already got the upgrades. And and really just punishing that bio bio army. It looks like the, the Archons may be trying to make another move into the 3 o'clock location or the third base over here. A one star essentially mining off of only about seven mineral patches right now. Seven or eight. So this is going to be very, very difficult as the Colossi Archon Zealots are now pushing in over here. You can see a lot of mules trying to run away. Not going to be able to do very much. The Stalkers now going after the Orbital Command. Orbital Command already down to 900 hit points. It may start to burn. And that would be an issue as One Star loses another Orbital Command. Yeah, and Time just came out with the Warp Prism. So he might use that to kind of take a forward position. Uh, I don't think he'll do any sort of proxy play, but... I think he's just going to use that as a forward pylon, going to use his huge bank, all these bases. He's on a seventh base at this point as well, so he's got a, a huge income, and now he's just going to be uh, reinforcing here, keeping that 200-200 train rolling into the base of uh, one star. Yeah, you can now see time pushing in. Ooh, an EMP shockwave hitting this target, but the stalkers are able to blink back. Massive size storm, more and more bile just trying to run away, but size storm and archons able to continue that push. Archons are massive units, able to... Uh, uh, take a Punisher Grenade in the face and keep on walking, and it looks like one star will be forced to say GG. Yeah, but a great late game, uh, late game here from both players. We saw back and forth at different times. One was significantly ahead, and then the other just came right back two or three times. A bit of a seesaw, a pendulum, whatever you want to call it. So a great game one to uh, Wednesday Night StarCraft here between BBV and Team PSW.